Hey Falcons Nation! Our Falcons offense is setting a new standard after Monday night's epic win over the Philadelphia Eagles. Before we dive into today's exclusive news, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any Falcons updates. You won't want to miss what's coming up as we gear up for a big matchup against the Kansas City Chiefs. Let's rewind to Monday night. Kirk Cousins threw a tough pass early in the game, but Drake London made an incredible catch. Cousins admitted it wasn't his best throw, but London's response was spot on, Kirk, we're just building on this. We're just getting started. That's right, Falcons fans, the mindset that's driving this team. We're building something special, and you can see it in the way the offense bounced back after a tough opening against the Steelers. Cousins echoed that sentiment in his Wednesday press conference, saying, we're getting better. From week two to week three, we're going to get better and keep building. And he's not wrong. The numbers back him up. From week one to week two, the Falcons' offense saw significant improvement. The rushing yardage jumped from 226 to 385, the passing yards increased from 137 to 233, and we rushed for 152 yards compared to 89 in the first game. Oh, and guess what? Zero turnovers. After losing the ball three times in week one, that's the kind of improvement we love to see. Speaking of rushing, let's give a shout out to Robinson and Tyler Algeyer. Those two combined for 150 rushing yards on Monday night, with Robinson racking up 97 of those yards, 72 in the first half alone. This is the kind of running game that gives a quarterback like Cousins room to work and keeps defenses on their toes. Offensive coordinator Zach Robinson said the running attack looked much more comfortable compared to week one, and that's a big step in the right direction. In week one, it felt like bullets were flying all over the place, but now it's clear this offense is settling in, building chemistry and getting ready to hit another gear. Cousins himself said it best, we learned a lot about ourselves in week one and we were able to apply that in week two. But we're going to do the same thing from week two to week three and week three to week four. I think as this year goes on, we're going to continue to build that relationship. Now, let's address the elephant in the room. The Kansas City Chiefs. This is a team that knows a thing or two about chemistry. With four Super Bowl runs and two championships under their belt, they've set the standard for excellence in the NFL. And now, they're coming to Atlanta on Sunday Night Football. But here's the thing, our Falcons are setting a new standard of their own. Zach Robinson has been using the word standard all week. It's not just about getting a win, it's about how we win and continue to get better each week. The performance we saw in Philadelphia wasn't just a fluke, and it wasn't the ceiling either. On the flight back from Philadelphia in the early hours of Tuesday morning, Robinson texted Cousins a congratulatory message, saying, Great job tonight, getting that done. But Cousins wasn't satisfied. His response? I've got to do better. I've got to be more precise. I've got to do this, this, and this. That's the mindset of a leader who's setting a standard. He's not settling for good enough. He wants to take this team further, and that's the energy we need going into this game against the Chiefs. Robinson is feeling the same motivation. After the game, he talked about how Monday's performance was just the beginning. When we're all on track, doing things the right way, that's the production we produced. I think it was just the beginning of the pattern, he said. I think we can do a lot more, a lot better. High expectations? Absolutely. But that's the kind of hunger that drives great teams. The Falcons aren't just looking to win, they're looking to be great, and Monday night's game was just a taste of what this offense can do. Can the Falcons keep up this level of play and beat the defending Super Bowl champions? Or do you think there's still more work to be done? Analysts have given us ways the Falcons can exploit the Chiefs' defense. First, the Falcons will need to lean into what they do best, run the ball and control the clock. Our ground attack, with Robinson and Tyler, needs to be at its best. Keeping the ball out of Patrick Mahomes' hands as much as possible will be crucial. The Chiefs' defense is no joke, but there's an opportunity for Atlanta to exploit its linebacker situation. It has been pointed out that Kansas City's linebacker play has been shaky at times, especially with Drew Tranquil taking on a bigger role after the team let Willie Gay Jr. go. 
The Falcons may be catching the Chiefs at the perfect time to take advantage of this weakness, especially in the middle of the field. Expect some big runs on the edge and at the second level. The offensive line will have its work cut out for it with Chris Jones, the Chiefs' dominant defensive lineman, but as long as Atlanta plans correctly, they can get creative in opening up passing lanes. Kirk Cousins, running play action, can find easier passes while keeping the Chiefs' passing pressure on edge. One thing we can't afford to do is be overly cautious because of Chris Jones. Sure, he's a beast, but that doesn't mean we abandon half of our playbook just to avoid him. We saw what happened in week one against the Steelers. Caleb McGarry had a tough time. Chris Jones is a similar threat, so our offensive line needs to be sharp. Cousins also needs to be careful with the ball because Kansas City's secondary is stacked with players. The key here is balance. We can't be too conservative or we'll play into their hands. At the same time, we can't take unnecessary risks that could lead to turnovers. Zach Robinson, our offensive coordinator, needs to come up with a game plan that keeps the Chiefs on edge while still maintaining control of the ball. Now, let's talk defense. The Chiefs are an offensive powerhouse, no doubt about it. But believe it or not, they do have some vulnerabilities. Kansas City has struggled at the tackle position since Mitchell Schwartz retired. Left tackle Kingsley Swamataya, in particular, has struggled. This is where Atlanta's pass rush needs to step up. Grady Jarrett will be crucial in pressuring Mahomes on the inside, but will also need some serious pressure on the edges. Matthew Juden could be a game-changer here. If we can consistently disrupt Mahomes' pocket, we'll have a real chance to limit his offense. Atlanta's defense has improved week after week, and this is the perfect game to prove that we're a legitimate force on that side of the ball. Here's the tough part. We could expect Mahomes to get his yards. It's just a reality we have to face. But what we can't allow is for Kansas City's running game to get out of hand. If we let them establish the run, Mahomes will have even more freedom to cut us off in the air. Another big concern is Travis Kelsey. He's been Mahomes' go-to target for years, and unless we have a solid plan to contain him, it could be a long night. Caden Ellis may need to keep an eye on Kelsey all night. And let's not forget Rassie Rice. Mahomes has been targeting him a lot this season, so our secondary will need to stay sharp. So, Falcons fans, this game is shaping up to be a nail-biter. What do you think the Falcons need to do to beat the Chiefs? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of the latest news. Go Falcons!